In some Buddhist traditions, it seems lay Buddhists should just kind of do their best and support the monks while not bothering to meditate. Is being a lay Buddhist with pressures of work and family really just about firefighting rather than aiming for total nirvana? Firefighting. The, I think this is a, this is a metaphor, no? For uh, putting out the fires but not stopping the fires, no? Not, not actually quenching the fires. Are you going to start it? Mm, can do. Okay, go on. No. Finish. Um, no. Um, I was in Thailand and I came in contact with uh, those traditions where uh, lay people are really just the, the those who bring the food and then better go off again. Uh, it's not everywhere like that in Thailand and and in other countries, but there are these places, and um, it is of course not so. In the Buddha's time, there were many lay people practicing and attaining nibbana, and or if not nibbana, other high achievements. So it is possible, and um, to to be just a supporter for the monks is just underestimating is that a correct word for that is just underestimating the the value and and the uh, um the potential of a person uh, not everybody has to become a monk although i i uh, heard in the video uh an interview with the Dalai Lama that he said the, uh, that more people should become monks and nuns because then we could damn the uh, increase of, of uh, birth rate on earth so our sources would be uh, lasting longer. Um, anyway, so mm, no, as a lay person, one should definitely strive for Nibbana and not just be firefighting, as you say, and not just be, look, that one is not too evil and not too greedy and not too angry, but really work on, on, on it as the monks should do. There are Uposata days which allow lay people to um, to practice that more intensely and to get used to it and to practice meditation on those days to be able to take it in their in their weekly uh, days and this is very important and that is something that in the West is still not very common that people keep the the eight precepts on on special days but I think it is very very helpful to do it um yeah so please now you yeah i mean just just because you're wearing white clothes and just because you're living in a house doesn't in have any intrinsic um doesn't give you the intrinsic need for work in the family no um it goes without saying that everyone has work that they have to do and lay people have more worldly affairs that for sure that they have to take care of but you know the the first the first thing is avoid the family you know <laughs> like avoid getting married and having kids uh if, if you don't already have them right so the the point i mean is is you know often in these sorts of traditions or or in any traditional cultural buddhist society people have the idea that that they can they should be buddhist but they also should do many things that, in fact, from a Buddhist point of view, they shouldn't do. I mean, if you have kids, you should take care of them, but you shouldn't be concerned about sending them abroad to you know, or or pushing them through university or trying to make them rich and and you know I involved in the worldly life. You shouldn't be involved in politics. Uh, you know, p people think that they still have to be involved in in society and in you know reading the news and and getting involved and speaking up and uh, being active in this and that 
you don't have to become caught up with these things. The, the, the simpler your life, the better, the better it will be for you. A lay person can live a life like this Gatakarika that we al I always mention when we have these sorts of questions. He went to the river, got some clay and made pots and put them by the side of the road and just sat by the side of the road selling pots and, and eked out a living, basically the, the very minimal amount. He didn't even charge for them. People asked how much you want for that pot and he'd say, just leave what you think it's worth. Leave some beans, leave some rice, whatever you think it's worth so I can continue my life. And in this way he was able to make a living and I think take care of his, his parents as well. So you you can live a very simple, chaste life if you're really serious about it. Then y you, as a lay person, can take the eight precepts uh, constantly. There, in the Buddha's time, there were lay people who kept the eight precepts and lived in 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 lay life. I've had students like this, people who are unmarried. Uh, I've had them keep the eight precepts on a daily basis, even going to work. I had a doctor once who went to work as a doctor keeping the eight precepts. Um, oh, I had a teacher who went to school teaching young children wearing white clothes. No. Uh, this kind of thing. You, 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 it's up to you to arrange your life. Th this is the great thing about Buddhism is you have the power. We are not powerless. This isn't a fatalistic religion or it's not even a dependent religion where you depend on any outside source for salvation or, or for your even for your development um, you you have to take charge of your own it, you are your own refuge and you have to make that effort so on the one hand you you, you have to wake you have to wake up and and you have to take charge and you have to change your life and it's your responsibility to do these things rather than just be negligent and think that i'm going to some or that it's somehow my duty to have a family and have children and buy a house and you know get a mortgage and a nice car and so on and so on in order to be a lay person you don't have to do that on the one hand another thing that i would say that even in cases where you have a family and you have many responsibilities because i've had many meditators who have small children and then realize you know, oops <laughs> wasn't the best because then they find meditation and they realize that oh there's there's something much more important than uh, helping our fellow human beings to be born again uh, or our fellow beings to, to be born in the human realm again. So uh, even if it is just about firefighting, even if you aren't able to take the time, if you've got huge debts or you have burdens of children and, and spouses and jobs and, and mortgages and you know, all of these things, even just firefighting, as you say, or, or to, to use a more technical term, even just the development of wholesome karma and the determination to purify your mind and to do five minutes of meditation a day and then to, to, to make a determination, may I be free from suffering, for wishing for all beings to be free from suffering. Even this is taking, taking a refuge, is taking a stand and is making a start on the path. The great thing about Buddhism is it's it's not uh, fatalistic, there, the, or it's not uh, um, it's not finite. No, if you don't get it in this life, if you don't become enlightened in this life, you you have a chance in the next life based on the work that you've done in the, you've you've done before. If you start yourself on the right path, set yourself in the right direction, th there's no reason that that you have to stop when you die. So even if it is supporting monks, and this is why many people do it, is they'll just you know, do the best they can, support the monks. And in general, don't, you know, the ones who are really keen on the practice will find a way to come to the monastery and spend five minutes, ten minutes meditating, uh, you know, talking to the monks once a week, you know, getting information about meditation. And maybe they don't ever have a chance in this life to do a meditation course, but they've gotten a start and they have this desire or this this uh, intention that sets them on the path so it goes both ways you you have to try your best but uh, when you're in a in a position where you can't become a monk and where you can't dedicate yourself to meditation rather than be discouraged you should take it as the first step you know take making the first step and and 
practicing as you can and developing as you can and the, you, you'll always find there's more that you could be doing than you actually do and we're very good at making excuses or um, falling into ruts and laziness when we could be doing more and we could be developing and we could be giving up some of our uh, some of, of our uh, burdens. There was one one uh, funny story from Ajahn Supan in, in Wat Lampung. Some of so, some people from Bangkok came to practice at Wat Lampung, and they said uh, they could only stay for a few days because uh, they had to go home to water their plants. You know, their home, their home was in Bangkok, so they had to drive back to Bangkok because otherwise their plants would die. And he said, "Well, plant new plants." <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, it was terrible because, of course, their house would, you know, many potted plants and trees and wonderful things. But they were they were strong meditators, and so they realized the importance of it, and they did. They let their plants die, and they stayed for, I think, almost a month, and then they had to go back and plant new plants. So, you know, rather than letting things get in our way, we have to make choices and you know ask ourselves what's really important: watering our plants or uh, purifying our minds. Um, I want to come back to the first sentence of your question, uh, and at the end you you write while not bothering to meditate. I know that there are monks out there who who pray that it's not necessary to meditate, um, but this is such such a dangerous formulation. Uh, it's never bothering to meditate. Um, whoever says something else is not really understanding probably what meditation is about but um, meditation is what leads you to the good if it doesn't lead you to ni Nibbana it leads you at least to more wholesomeness more goodness in your life so it is never bothering to meditate and should be done whenever possible. 